Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on Eat Sleep Brief. And this week, we're gonna be giving you guys a different style of update. As you can see, I'm not as beautiful as the tanks I, I have or have had. So pretty much it's just gonna be kind of a running gun talking more than anything, but we're gonna be covering some very important topics. I've been thinking a lot, and I don't know if you guys are aware or aren't aware, uh, the people in, in, in my reefing circle, especially if you're really close to it, you've probably heard already that I've been, and I've actually talked about it here with you guys, but I've been in the process of purchasing a home. So while purchasing a home is some really great news, there's a lot of stuff you gotta overcome, not only in your personal life, you know, with your family, getting everything moved, getting everything organized, but just from the whole reefing side of it. There's tons of stuff that needs to happen. There's corals that need to be, you know, moved, find someone to take care of them. There's tanks that need to be broken down, either stored or, you know, relocate. I mean, there's just tons and tons of logistics involved just on reefing. This is, again, this is not even counting your family, movers, uh, repairs, or anything of that sort that go on in a move. So there's been a lot of stuff that I've been doing, you know, you probably haven't seen me as active on Instagram. I've been trying to do my best on YouTube. Uh, obviously this video you guys are watching now didn't come out this morning, it's coming out later in the day. But again, I've just been so occupied with uh, with life, with this move. I'm happy to say we found our home. We're about to close. It's about to be a done deal. Hopefully in the next coming days, it's gonna officially on paper be uh, be my new property. So here are a few pictures of it. Uh, this is the outside. The living room, I'm pretty sure a lot of you reefers are already saying, I have an idea where that tank can go. Um, and it's great because great minds think alike. And um, you know, the backyard, it does have a pool. I'm very excited. Not only am I gonna be maintaining a reef tank, but I'm gonna be maintaining a pool. I figured, hey, how hard are you gonna be? I can maintain calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, trace elements, pH, all that in a reef tank. So how hard can it be to maintain a pool, right? Hopefully I get it you know, on the first try, hopefully I don't do any any mishaps. Uh, although if there is hair algae in that tank, we already know what we're gonna do with it, right? Or not that tank, that pool, just kidding. So in that, we're not even really gonna talk about tanks at all. I really wanna talk about what's been on my mind this whole week. I remember seeing a video that um, uh, Reef Dudes put up, I think it was a few weeks ago. It was about quarantine. And you guys know in the past, I, I just haven't been able to quarantine. A lot of people say, oh, there's no way you can't. Trust me, I got a daughter that's always running everywhere, grabbing everything. I can't just put up a tank anywhere. I don't have a lot of space. I, there's a lot of variables involved <clears throat> as to why I didn't have a quarantine tank. So after watching that video, I watched that whole video. If you guys haven't watched that video, I highly urge you to check it out. I'm gonna have it down, a link in the description. But he has two guest speakers, um, Humble Humble Reef, I think was one of them, and I forget the name of the other guy, sorry, but um, I watched the whole video, the full hour and whatever it was. And guys, I gotta say, I picked up a lot of information. Uh, you know, Reef Dudes does a great job of always having guest speakers on his, uh, on his videos. And if you guys aren't watching them, let me tell you, you're really missing out because there's a lot of knowledge that comes from people that have been doing this longer than, my, for sure longer than myself, longer than you probably watching this video. So there's a lot of knowledge involved, a lot of hurdles that you won't have to go through taking their advice, right? So with that being the topic, they talked about quarantine, they talked about the different medications they use, the different ways they do it, how many days they do it. They talked about just a whole bunch of great stuff. And my biggest takeaway was, and I was trying to incorporate it to myself, I knew for sure in this new build I'm gonna be doing, I only have, want to have one quarantine system. I, don't, there's, I know guys that have two, guys that have three, they'll do copper treatment in one, then they'll transfer after the copper, do Prozzi Pro or some sort of that uh, Prozzi Pro in the next tank, then they'll transfer again and have it be um, a, an observation tank. So there, there's different stages, right? I kind of don't want that. Not only do I not want that, I just don't, again, I don't have all that space. All right, probably did if I really wanted to, but I have other hobbies that also need to take space in my garage, if that makes sense. So I know for sure I want to do one tank, okay? And in this video, guys, it's not only a video about talking about what I'm thinking about doing. I also want to get as much feedback from you guys as I can. 
because I've never been down this road. I've never quarantined in my life. The JBJ was my first tank. The 50 gallon is my second tank. And we're only on, we're moving on to bigger and better things as you guys can probably envision, which I haven't announced yet. That's top secret. I'm gonna be announcing very soon the new build. But anyways, so I know I wanna do one tank. The next hurdle was to start treating copper from day one, even if there's no signs of the fish showing anything. Some people say yes, some people say no, some people say just observe, then throw it in the tank if you don't see anything. But then there's guys that say, these parasites lie within the fish, under it, in the gills. You may not see it till a month after. That's why they recommend starting copper no matter what. Then there's the next hurdle you need to overcome. There's certain fish that do not take copper very well. Certain angels, um, certain tangs, certain antheus type fish, certain wrasses that don't take them. I mean, there's just gobies. I mean, it's just a goby isn't not going to take quarantine copper, period. Um, so there's, there's those hurdles that need to be overcome. And I need to figure all this out, right? So I know for sure I'm going to do one tank. I know for sure I'm going to do copper treatment from day one. From the very moment that fish enters that tank, it's gonna have copper. <clears throat> now I am aware that I don't wanna stun the fish. So I'm gonna have, uh, what's a brand I'm gonna be using? Um, not the Sea Chem, it's the Blue Bottle. Someone will correct me. Uh, co copper Blue, I think it's called Copper Blue. Um, but they're saying recommending start at one PPM when you first add the fish, then slowly over three to five days, increase it to the two or the 2.5 where it starts to become effective. So when you hear me say, as soon as the fish goes in, I'm gonna have copper in there, that's what I meant. It's gonna have a very low level so the fish can acclimate. I had to figure out for how many days I wanna do that. Some guys say seven days, some guys say 14 days, some guys say 30 days. Generally, what I found out from the video I saw from Reef Dude, they recommend 30 days if you're only doing one tank. If you're doing one tank, they recommend the treatment of copper to be a full 30 days now this is where I'm kind of confused and I actually want you guys to help me here. From my understanding, I want to use general cure from API, not only in the food, but also in the water column. I know you can use Prozzi Pro, but from those guys, what I picked up is general cure or not cover those type of worms, but also some other stuff. And I also like that you can feed it, not directly to the fish, but put it in its food, mix it with some Seachem product that allows it to buy, and I forgot the name. But this is what I want to ask you guys. Can I mix API general cure while dosing the copper blue? That's, I don't know. I don't know if you can. I believe with Seachem you can't because it's a different type of copper. That's another thing I learned. There's different kinds of copper. Who would have thought guys, right? Who would have thought copper is copper, but no. There's from my understanding two, probably more, but um, in that video what I got, there's up to two types of, of different copper. So that's another thing I had to uh, <clears throat> figure out and that's also one, what I want to ask you guys can I mix API general cure while I'm doing my copper treatment the copper uh, copper blue treatment for the 30 days if I can't if you guys in the comments tell me no that cannot be done then the plan is 30 day copper then do probably a 50% water change to lower the level maybe in a few you know two more days do another 50% water change to lower the levels in this time also running carbon and whatever medias are out there because I know there's medias that will absorb carbon to get it out of the water before I, I start any other medication such as API general cure. So that's kind of been my thing and the general cure I believe you do it for two weeks uh, to verify that there's no more worms in the fish not or internal or external parasites uh, none of that bad stuff and then after that after the 30 days plus two weeks the fish looks good then we can put it into the reef tent. So that's my plan. And trust me, guys, I, I've, I've read and I've heard that there's even more extensive quarantines you can do. But I'll be honest with you. I'm not looking to do, you know, a two-month quarantine, then put in the observation, then put mollies in there as canary fish to see if they pick up it. I'll be honest. I'm not looking to do all that. I know for a fact I will and do want expensive fish in this new build. Uh, expensive tangs. There's tons of other uh, uh, tons of other fish. So there's a fine line. But then also in that fine line, I know in my head I'm telling myself I'm better off than I've I'm better off doing it my way, the way I'm talking about, 
than just doing it the way I've been doing it, which is no quarantine. Which brings me to another topic. I know some guys have actually reached out to me on Instagram and said, dude, like don't even worry about quarantine, you're wasting your time. Ick is gonna end up in your system no matter what, X, Y, and Z. To be totally honest with you guys, I'm not quarantining because of ick. I am, and I'll repeat that again. I am not quarantining to get rid of ick in my system. And you're probably saying, then what the heck are you doing? I know through the copper treatment, I'm going to kill the ick. That I know. But if ick is ever introduced into my system, I'm not afraid of it. Uh, why? Because I've dealt with it in, in the past. Not only myself, even if you watch that video from Reef Dudes, the two guys talking on there, <clears throat> they now have ick in their system and it, you know for them to get it out they'd have to tear the whole thing it, it'd just be nearly impossible at this point to get out even then that they have a very strict quarantine and you're probably saying so how the heck did it get in there this is where the fine line kind of comes if you're going to quarantine your fish only you have to realize that if you're not willing to quarantine your corals your inverts well, guess what they can possibly have a tiny little drop of water that's carrying that parasite that you're trying to get out of your system. It's a hard pill to swallow. It's a very hard pill to swallow. You're like, I'm doing all this work and there still is a way you can get in? If, if you guys watched that video, this blew me away. One of the guys mentioned that Ick was able to be transferred through mist, through evaporated water, which blew me i couldn't believe it but then again they have way more experience than i do pretty much the story was one of their clients had their main display let's say here and they had like a 10 gallon quarantine or something system 10 feet away from the tank sooner or later that quarantine ended up with the whatever parasites or ick or whatever was in the in the quarantine tank the only way that could have happened through their process of elimination was it had to have misted over to the display, which was ridiculous. That's another rule of thumb. You also notice when you're looking at quarantine videos or reading forms, they'll recommend you to put them more than 10 feet away from the display. Why? Because I guess particles can jump, bacteria can jump, parasites can jump through the air into the display, which I didn't even know that. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't ever going to put my uh, quarantine next to my tank, but that just blew me away. So yeah, that, that kind of going back to where I was, I'm not, again, I'm not quarantining to get ick out because I know fish can live with it. The majority, not all, right? And there's different cases, I know. I'm not trying to generalize. But generally speaking, ick can live into, in a system with no problem. It'll be fine. Fish are eating. Good. Velvet. Brook. I mean, those... Look at my, my 50 gallon mode aquarium. It sadly, I mean, I, I honestly still miss the clowns that, that that thing eradicated. The coal tank was, I was so hoping to move those fish to, to the, you know, the bigger tank. But I've seen what those parasites can do. And the JBJ, I didn't deal with that. Um, I deal with it. Actually, no, I did. I dealt with Brooke. I went through like four clownfish, um, if I remember correctly, in the JBJ. Uh, and they were beautiful designer clowns I had ordered specifically uh, for the tank and it is what it is. So kind of going back, like I said, ick is going to be treated to, through my quarantine. But if it ever gets introduced into the display, I'm not going to go crazy over it. I, I can live with it perfectly without any problem. Velvet, brook, worms, all these other parasites, I'm going to do my best to get them out through the quarantine, right? Which goes to the next thing. Am I willing to quarantine corals and inverts? Well, I should be asking that question. Should I? Yes, I should. Should you? Probably. Will I? No. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys. I'm not about to quarantine corals. And I'm not about to quarantine inverts. Some of you guys may be saying, well, yeah, you're probably saying that now. Wait till you get a huge outbreak. Well, then so be it. Wait till I get that outbreak. Because um, that's just not something I'm willing to do. I'm not willing to take up that much space in my garage uh, with that much tanks. Because, again, I have other hobbies. I'm sure a lot of you guys have, you know, a lot of you guys can't do it. Why? Because you have wives that just won't allow that, right? In my case, I have other hobbies and I just can't take up that much real estate in my new home. But, again, going back to everything, I think we can all agree that my 
main plan now and what I'm looking to want to do is a lot better than what I've been doing and probably more than better than 90 to 95 percent of what maybe you watching this video are doing yeah so here's a quick rundown of my quarantine I'd like to hear your guys thoughts so I'm gonna probably start with a 20 gallon tank probably only fill it halfway um, I want to have for the filtration I want to have that little sponge bubble thing I forget what it's called uh, but that's what I want to have. Why? Because I feel the bubble itself aerates the water a lot better, especially with medication. The bio, the little sponge filter should do, you know, do a good job of housing the bacteria. No rock, no sand. If I have rasses, I'll put a little tiny little container of, of sand that'll be thrown out after the treatment. And PVC, different size PVC, the little ammonia alert, a heater, a basic light, and that's about it. As far as the treatment goes, it's going to be copper starting at, uh, I think the copper blue is the brand, correct me if I'm wrong, starting at about 1 ppm when the fish is thrown in there, obviously temperature acclimate it, then put it in there. Uh, after that, slowly raise it to 2 to 2.5 ppm using the HANA, the, the HANA copper checker. I love HANA, as you guys know, uh, and it's really accurate and makes your life a little bit easier than looking at colors. Do the full copper treatment for 30 days. Whether you guys comment down below if I can use General Cure during that treatment, I will or won't. If you guys say I can't, then when I'm done with the copper treatment, uh, 30 days, 50% water change, while running carbon, while running media to get the copper out, another 50% water change should put us close to you know very low levels of copper, which is then my plan to introduce API General Cure do that for two week, the two week recommended period, while at the same time, in the food, putting general cure so they can also eat it and rid the fish of parasites with it. That's my plan. After that, once general cure is over, I mean, I can probably leave the fish in there for like five days just to look at it, observe it, and then the fish is gonna go to the display. That's my plan. I'd love to hear down below your guys' comments. Love to hear your guys' suggestion, because your guys' suggestions, because again, this is a realm that I've never been in, I've no experience in. So for all you know, everything I'm saying is BS, and it doesn't even make sense. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, so if you guys are watching this video, I probably wouldn't take everything I'm saying right now and run with it. Wait till you know I refine it through all your great comments, you guys that have done this, and more of my reading. I think I'll be able to get you guys in the right direction. So. Unlike a lot of the videos I do where it's telling you guys how to do something or how I do something, I got no idea what I'm doing here, guys, and I'm just going to be straight up with you. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts, your guys' comments on that. Um, maybe you guys recommend another treatment. I know guys are recommending Prozzi, Prozzi Pro over API General Cure. API General Cure, from my understanding, just covers a lot more. Then there's also a copper that was recommended from... Uh, Fritz. Fritz makes a copper. I've never even looked, seen it. I didn't even know. But I read that they make a copper that'll treat the fish, you know, through the copper and it'll also treat other stuff, which I'm going to have to research about. So this new build, guys, it's going to be a lot of new stuff. A lot of new stuff for me, probably a lot of new stuff from you. I'm also going to be doing a sick, sick saltwater mixing station that I'm super excited to start building that. Uh, but again, I'm going to be reaching out to you guys because, again, I've never done that. So I'm going to get as much input as I can from each and every one of you. So, guys, I know this video was a little bit winded, a little bit long. Hopefully, I didn't bore you. If you really stayed watching this till the very end, leave a comment down below. I'd like to see who the true reefers are, the true followers that I have, the true subscribers are watching till the very end. Because 19 minutes of me just ranting, now 20 quite some time. So leave a comment down below if you stay to the very end also. I'd love to hear your guys' suggestions. Your guys' suggestions on my time frames, on my medication, my time periods, so on and so forth. So guys, we're gonna wrap this video up here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, happy reefing. Man, that was a super long video.